Hi, my name's Dave Pegg and I work for PACE, teaming up with local Christians from local churches to help everyone in local schools explore the Christian faith. In the last lesson, we looked at the basic beliefs of Christianity. Do you remember these four pictures? Pause the video quickly and see if you can remember what they mean. All Christians everywhere believe four basic things. One, God loves us and created us to know him personally. That's why we're all here. Two, we're separated from God by our sin, the things we do wrong. Three, Jesus died on the cross as God's only solution for our sin problem. More about this in the lesson today. And four, each of us must decide to trust and follow Jesus. Only then can we know God's love and forgiveness. It's all about a loving relationship with the God who made us and doing life with him rather than without him now and forever. In this lesson, we're talking about Jesus. Who is he really? Christianity is all about Jesus. The clue is in the name. Christianity, it's all about Jesus Christ. A Christian is someone who trusts and follows him. By the end, you should be able to do this. Explain what Christians believe about Jesus. Give examples of what Jesus actually said about himself. Evaluate the claim that Jesus was simply a good person. And describe some of the ways in which Jesus has uniquely impacted the world and suggest some possible reasons for this. I've asked literally hundreds of people on the streets what they think about Jesus, and they have all sorts of answers. What do you think about Jesus? Who is he? Pause now and think or discuss your answer and write something down. People say all sorts of things about Jesus, but I never have to explain who he is. You're probably not watching this video thinking, Jesus, never heard of him. No, you have heard of him, and that's because, to say the very least, he's a pretty big deal. Jesus' life divides history. Our calendars are based on his life. Jesus was born around 2,000 years ago, and we count our years based on the year of his birth. The years before he was born are called BC, which stands for before Christ. And in the years we're in now, they're called AD, which is Latin, Anno Domini, and that means the year of our Lord. Pretty amazing. Time magazine, one of the biggest magazines in America, called Jesus the most influential person who's ever lived. Over 2.4 billion people in the world today say they're Christians. That's nearly one third of the world's population. Mark Driscoll, an American church leader and author, said it this way, No one has affected human history like Jesus Christ. More songs sung about him, more paintings painted of him, more books written regarding him than anyone who's ever lived in the history of the world. In other words, Jesus has left a pretty big dent. There are lots of people who've affected the world, but 2,000 years after Jesus lived, he remains the most influential person in all of human history by a long way. Some people are famous, but Jesus is off the scale famous. Imagine, could any other human being alive today impact the world this much so that the calendars are split again based on the year they were born, and a third of the world's population say they follow them 2,000 years from now? More paintings, artwork about them than anyone who's ever lived? It's not likely. Jesus has had a unique impact on human history. Now this doesn't prove Christianity is true, but it should be more than enough to make us curious about who Jesus really was. And it should make us wonder if he might possibly have been more than a man. So what do you think best explains the impact Jesus has had on the world? Pause now and think or discuss your answer again and jot down what you think. As I've spoken to loads of people on the streets about Jesus and asked them who they think he is, most of them will probably say nice things about him, but most of them will say something good about him, but that he's not God. Bono, the lead singer of U2, once said, the secular response to the Christian story always goes like this. He was a great prophet, obviously a very interesting guy, but actually Christ doesn't allow you that. He doesn't let you off the hook. Christ says, I am God incarnate, which means God in human form. So what you're left with, he says, is either Jesus is who he said he was or a complete nutcase. 
I'm not joking here. The idea that the entire course of civilization for over half the globe could have its fate changed and turned upside down by a nutcase, for me, that's far-fetched. Remember what Christians actually believe about Jesus. We believe he is God's only solution for our sin problem. We believe that God himself has turned up in human history as one of us, God the Son, Jesus, to live the life we couldn't live, die in our place for our sin, and rise from the dead, proving that he's the real deal. This is what the Bible actually says about Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, it says that Mary, the Virgin, will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The name of Jesus tells us who he's meant to be. Elsewhere in the Bible, it says that in Christ, the fullness of God lives in bodily form. And it also says that Jesus, who being in very nature God, was found in appearance as a man. So, Bono thinks he's God, Christians everywhere believe Jesus is God, and the Bible says Jesus is God. But what did Jesus actually say about himself? If he didn't really claim to be God, then Christians probably shouldn't say he's God. Did Jesus claim to be God then? Well, let's see. In Mark's Gospel, written very soon after the death of Jesus, He tells us that the Jewish high priest asked Jesus, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? And that Jesus replied simply, yes, I am. Jesus is claiming to be the Jewish Messiah, the rescuer promised in their ancient writings, the Old Testament part of our Bibles. One of Jesus' disciples and closest friends, a man named John, also wrote one of the earliest gospel accounts, and it's in our Bibles. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. And Jesus didn't deny it. He didn't say, oh no, you've misunderstood. I didn't mean to say I'm God, but he didn't deny it. His enemies have understood him well enough. They just don't believe him, that's all. Jesus also said, I have come down from heaven. Many people sometimes claim to have gone up to heaven and had a glimpse of it, but Jesus says this is where he's from. He also says, before Abraham was born, I am. Which is really bad grammar, isn't it? Surely he should have said, before Abraham was born, I was. But I am is one of the Jewish names for God, and Jesus is deliberately using it to say that's who he is. Not only is he claiming to have existed forever, he's specifically claiming to be the same God who spoke to Abraham about 2,000 years before. And one more, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's claiming to be God and to be the only way to really know God. So, in lots of different ways, Jesus really did say, I am God. Now, you might be wondering, is Jesus the Son of God or God? Well, Christians believe that God is love and that he's a trinity, which means three in one, triunity, like a perfectly united loving family. God the Father, God the Son, that's Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. That's why we see God in the Bible having conversations within himself. And we see God the Son, Jesus, praying and talking to God the Father. So saying Jesus is the Son of God is the same as saying he's God. So it's not just Bono that says Jesus is God. All Christians believe it, the Bible says it, and Jesus himself over and over again kept saying, I am God. That's why the Jewish leaders wanted him killed on the cross. They thought he was lying. It's possible, isn't it? C.S. Lewis, the author of the Narnia stories such as The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, described three logical possibilities if we're wondering who Jesus really was. He was bad, mad or God. When Jesus claimed to be God, it's possible, isn't it, that he was wrong and that he knew he was wrong, so he's a liar. Or he could have been unknowingly wrong, mistaken or deluded, mentally unwell. Or He was telling the truth. He really was and is God, doing something unique so that people could be forgiven and have the loving relationship with God that they were made for. But, Lewis says, let us not come up with any patronising nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. In other words, Jesus can't just be a good person 
because good people don't say they're God. What do you think about Jesus' claims to be God? Pause now for a minute to figure out what you think about this. So, why should we be curious about Jesus? Well, firstly, we've seen the unique and huge impact he's had on the world. And secondly, the Christian claim is that Jesus is the only one who can give each of us a loving relationship with the God who made us. So there's a lot on the line. And I hope you've got lots of questions to ask. By now, you should have a pretty good grasp of what Christians believe about Jesus and can quote some of the things Jesus said about himself. We've also considered the unique impact Jesus has had on the world and begun to evaluate the claim that he was good, but not God. In our next lesson, we'll look at some stories of people today who say they experience a relationship with God and that their lives have been saved and transformed by Jesus. Well done and see you next time.